Now that we have our file system and we've stored some files in our hard drive, we can also give those files attributes. Regardless of the permissions that anybody has to the files, there are certain attributes you can assign to the file that are very specific to the file, regardless of who is accessing that file. One attribute is read-only. You can take a file and you can turn on the read-only attribute. And no matter who you are, you can't overwrite that file. You've specifically said, this file is one that cannot be overwritten unless you remove that read-only attribute. That can become really useful if you just want to create a file that people can read and you want to make sure nobody changes it and nobody overwrites the file. There's also a bit called the archive bit. And if a file has been modified since the last backup, the archive bit is checked so that if you send a backup program through, it looks for all of the files with the archive bit enabled and you'll know if that file has been archived or not. The system bit designates this file as being specific to the operating system. And generally, that's used to hide files from us. If it is a system file, then your operating system knows not to show it to you, for instance. It also lets you know that this particular file, if you're trying to figure out what is this file and where did it come from, if it has the system attribute set, you know that's probably a file you should not be changing because it's important for your operating system. And there's also a way to hide files. Maybe you'd like to have the files on your hard drive or in a subdirectory or are somewhere on your system, but you don't normally want to display those files. They're really there for some back office purposes. They're for the operating system to use. They're just files you want to store away. You can view them in other ways. This doesn't completely hide them from anybody. It just really hides them from your day-to-day -day browsing around on your hard drive. So that hidden bit enables that so that it's hidden from your operating system under normal uses. And the NTFS means that the if you're using NTFS as your file system, there are also a number of other extended file attributes. I mentioned that NTFS brings some advantages over our FAT and our FAT32, and some additional file attributes uh, certainly is one of those advantages that comes with NTFS. Let's look at some of those file attributes. Let's go to our Start menu. I'm going to right mouse click and choose Explore. And before we look at the files, I'm going to go to my computer and into my C drive. I'm going to right mouse click and choose Properties so that you can see that the file system on this computer is in TFS. So we should get some of those additional advanced file attributes when we start looking at them. Let's go into our, my user directory. I have in here under My Documents, there's a Downloads folder. And I've got some files that are already in here. So let's play around with this. Our Chrome setup, there's a Properties option. And under Properties, you'll see what the attributes are. You can set your read-only attribute from here, and you can set your hidden attribute from here. If you made this a read-only document, and you, I'm going to click OK and get rid of that for just a moment, and then you try deleting that file, it will tell you that that's a read-only file. And if I tried to write to the file, it would not allow me to write to that file either. So just by setting it to read-only gets me some advantages there as well. If I go back in here under Attributes, you'll notice one of the options was Advanced. And if I click the Advanced, now we're seeing the things available to us that we normally don't see on FAT32. We can see things like compress the contents of this file to save disk space, or encrypt the contents of this file to secure the data within it. So I can take entire folders, encrypt them, and nobody would be able to see the data that was in there and understand what they were looking at except me because I have the special key that will unlock and decrypt that data. It's all built into NTFS, all part of the operating system, completely seamless. I don't need any third-party programs to be able to do that. And I'm able to make that happen just by turning on or turning off different file attributes. It's nice to be able to set attributes on an entire file, but maybe we would like to give certain people access to read and write to a file and other people access just to read the file, and then maybe even a third group of people that can't even see the file. We would do that through something called permissions. And this allows us to do things like grant access to the files based on people that are on our computer, maybe across the network. And I can set specific permissions of what people can do based on whether that's a file or a folder. For instance, I could set full control. I can give you access to modify the file. I can allow you to read the file and execute the file or maybe just read the file. So there's a lot of different things I can do. If it's a folder, I have a few other things like list the contents of the folder, which would apply obviously if I had set permissions on an entire folder itself. Now we can find all of those also inside the Windows Explorer, but there's a little trick you need to know to be able to really see everything. Let's have a look at that. 
We're back in our download directory. And we'll go back to our Chrome setup. If I right mouse click and choose Properties, there's really no tab across the top here that has anything to do with security and setting permissions. Well, the reason for that is by default, Windows doesn't turn that on. What you want to do is go to your Tools pull down menu in Windows Explorer and choose Folder Options. And under the View tab at the very bottom is an option that says Use Simple File Sharing Recommended. Well, you're a CompTIA a certified professional. You need a lot more than simple file sharing. You need to see everything. So we're going to uncheck that and click OK. Now when I right mouse click on Chrome Setup and I choose Properties, I have a new tab available called Security. Aha. So this changes now the access that I have to be able to do things with that file. The first thing is I get to specify who has access to the file. By default in this file, administrators have access to the file. They get everything. The system itself has access, certain access to the file that it can use. And then this virtual user that I'm configured for on my computer has a certain amount of access to the file. Maybe I would like to give more people access to this file. I can easily add. And based on other people that are in my computer, I can now try to find different names. And if I want to find the, for instance, uh, everybody who's on my system, I could simply just find everything. And it's going to list out all these different people. I'm going to choose guests in this. And I can, of course, do, do uh, searches through this, which really helps if it's a big network. So on this computer, the username of guests. And I'm going to click OK. And there's my guests log on. And now I've got uh, what I can do with this. If you're a guest, I want you to be able to read that file and maybe execute that file, but not modify it and certainly not have full control. Uh, in fact, I'm going to make sure that's not the case. And that looks good to me. I could even set more advanced settings for this. Notice that you can go into this guests now connection. This really blows up a lot of different advanced security settings and really go into a lot of details about the different options available for this file. So when you start working with permissions, and especially with applications, multiple people on a machine, multiple people accessing files across the network, you really want to go in here and spend a lot of time understanding what all of the different attributes are available for files and folders. You want to get familiar with adding new people into the permissions list, and maybe also drilling down into the advanced options and editing the very specific permissions for a user when they go into this particular file or this particular folder. We're now storing files in our computer. So let's find out what we may have learned in this video. Let's find out on four directories and files. Our first question, which file system is specific to Microsoft Windows? Now we saw one that was very specific to Windows used by many different Windows operating systems. And that was the NT file system or NTFS. Another question, what does a plus sign next to a folder do? We use that a couple of times today. And if you click the plus sign, it expands it out to show you all the other files and subfolders that might be underneath it, depending on what you're looking at there. It certainly helps you expand and contract and make things on your screen look a little bit different. And the last question, you're unable to override a file on your computer. Which file attribute is probably causing this issue? Well, if you remember, there were a number of attributes that you can assign to a file. There's system, there's hidden. But in our case, it's probably, if we're able to overwrite the file once we can see it, it's probably the read-only attribute that's really giving us a problem. If you'd like to see any of our other CompTIA a certification training, you'd like to participate in our message board, send me a message, and much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.